This week on the Film Frat Podcast, we are talking about photography. Still photography. I know. It's not in the name of this podcast. It's the Film Frat Podcast, not the Photo Frat Podcast, although it could be. That has a nice ring to it. But in this episode, we're talking about photography, specifically stills, because I feel like this was a really important concept to discuss, especially for those who want to become cinematographers. It's not just about understanding what it's like to work with video. With working with stills, it gives you the chance to understand composition. It also gives you the the understanding of working relationships with a talent one-on-one, which may not always be the case with video because in a film project, at least for me, I've always found myself more working in group settings, which were usually three plus people. But with photography, the unique thing is that you can work with someone one-on-one. And today, I had the pleasure of interviewing one of my good friends who is a working photographer for an ad agency in San Diego. So he knows all about photography and working with professional clients. He also knows a lot about personal relationships, working with people, talking to people, communicating. But not just that but being a sincere and honest person to work with, someone you can trust, someone who's responsible, who's organized. And these are things that not everybody thinks about, myself included, when we work on a project. So today we're not really talking as much about technicals in photography as much as we are about interpersonal relationships and getting the chance to work with people in the first place because you can't just have the skills to work a camera. Yes, that's one of the things. But you also need to know how to talk to people and get people to work with you and like you. And and some people might not like you for who you are, but but there are certain certain things that can make you stand out as a photographer. And being self-centered is definitely not a good thing. So, we get into all these things and more with our special guest today, Sam Lee, but first, I want to kick off that intro which is the Film Frat Podcast. I know, not the Photo Frat Podcast, but we're getting into photos today. Stick with me, because this is the Film Frat Podcast, episode 23. This is the Film Fraternity Podcast, a show that's all about filmmaking in college, so you can turn your student projects into powerful portfolios. And now, here's the host of Film Frat House, Zach Sabo. Hey, hey, welcome back to the show where we talk about filmmaking, but we also talk about photography because they are interconnected. Yeah? Okay, maybe you don't realize that they're interconnected, but I mean, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. They both operate, they both involve camera operation, but more than that, they're all about collaboration because you can be out on your on, on your own doing a documentary about nature or whatever you can make a, a photo collection about nature but these days it's all about working with people it's about it's all about creating a story it's all about telling other people's stories it's it's capturing reality as it is in society And there are a lot of interesting things that we can capture in this world. So it's not just something that we can go out on our own and and do and do for the most part. And I found that filmmaking and photography are collaborative mediums, which is something very unique to, to this specific art, to art in general. You think about any other art forms as collaborative as this? No, no. Painting? No. No, definitely not. not. Video game design is collaborative, sure, if you consider that an art form. But apart from that, you can't really think of any other art form that is uniquely collaborative as photography and filmmaking. And they are very interconnected. Now, I don't get into the details of why it's important to be a photographer to become a cinematographer, but You can get a glimpse of what it's like to be a working photographer based on the story of Sam Lee, 
my good friend. Uh, we met in church before, and he is a working photographer. He has worked for an ad agency in San Diego, so he knows about product uh, promotion, marketing, which are very important, especially for your own profile and your own portfolio. You're going to need to know a little bit of marketing to, to show off your skills. But Sam and I talk a lot about relationship, credibility specifically. So this episode is all about how you can build your credibility as a photographer and in the meantime, get to where you want to be as a photographer. Because in the beginning, you might not always do what you like to do. Uh, Sam actually talks a bit about how he got into that ad agency, not on the creative side initially, but then he managed to show off his skills a little bit. And then the agency took notice of his photography skills, and then they brought him over to that creative side. So you can make your way in. In the beginning, you may not be where you want to be, but that is okay because we're all growing, and you can grow as a photographer. You, that's where you grow into any industry, in my opinion. You might start out on a lower level, but then you'll build up to where you want to be, and that's encouraging. So don't worry if you're not at where you want to be yet because it's all a process. So I encourage you, especially as a student, if you're a student like me, you have plenty of time. Don't worry about it. But you should be a little aware about that and create a plan. So hopefully this episode will give you an idea of what that plan is, and hopefully it'll get you thinking about that. I know I've thought about it a lot. Believe me, I'm a senior now, about to graduate. I thought long and hard about what I want to do as a creative so what I'm going to get into, um, hopefully, is the news news industry, as a full-time job anyway, uh, which is somewhat, as a photographer, maybe there's some creative uh, room to work with. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward, so you may not get a lot of creative exposure, even in that, even in the broadcast world. But that's okay, because on the side, I plan to do filmmaking, and that's where you should draw the line for yourself. If you want to make it full-time or if you want to do your dream part-time. Now, I'm, I'm basically saying that I'm doing my dream part-time, um, but that's just my priorities in life and um, where I am in, in my family and everything. I can't afford to be full-time yet. Doesn't say doesn't mean that I can't become full-time later. It just means I'm part-time now but later on I aspire to be full-time so you got to start somewhere not everyone got the chance in fact 90% of people who enter the filmmaking and photography business professionally usually do not enter as a full-timer for sure usually it's a uh, it's what are they called uh, they're not part-timers but they're not independent contractors. What are they? They're they're project based basically, like they're on call almost. So oh, there goes my light. <laughs> if you're watching the video version of this podcast, this is a good reminder. Thank you, light, for turning off. If you want to watch the video version of this podcast, you can do that at Patreon.com/slash/filmfrat. That's funny. I totally forgot about the video version of this podcast, and the light turning off just made me realize that I'm filming myself right now. <laughs> And I even filmed uh, the interview with Sam for this episode on Zoom, which is my first time doing a Zoom podcast. Uh, so the, the quality is not going to be as good. I apologize for that. But if you want to check out the video version and see Sam's amazing face, you can do so at patreon.com slash film frat, all one word. And there you get the whole entire library of film frat episodes you get the whole video version ad-free, by the way. I didn't mention this in the past, but all the video versions of this podcast are ad-free. Uh, and I usually I have a little inter intermittent uh, ad that plays in the middle of the podcast. So if you don't want to hear that, I suggest you watch the, the video version over only exclusively at patreon.com slash filmfrat. I hope you enjoy those because you get to see everyone's face and you get to see me interacting with them and you get to know me a little bit better 
hopefully feel a little bit more personal and connected to me. I know it's not always easy if you're just listening over Spotify or Apple Podcasts right now. You might be thinking, uh, you know, I kind of want to see him. You know, I feel like you feel in general when you listen to a podcast, you want to actually see the person's face. I don't know what it is about human psychology that does that, but you it makes you want to see them. So, especially in these times right now, I encourage you, if you just donate $2, $2 a month, you get all exclusive access to the video versions of this podcast and your name on the website as a donor. So, all right, without further ado, it is time to kick off episode 23, which is gaining credibility as a photographer with my good friend, Samuel Lee, who is a working photographer. I hope you enjoy it. Please take notes because he does say a lot of interesting things about the relationships that you can make as a photographer and why it's important to network and and to not only gain your technical st- skills, but also your people skills. All right. Hope you enjoy. This is Samuel Lee. All right. Samuel Lee is in the house. How are you, Sam? It's been a minute. I'm doing good, Zach. It's good to see your good looking face. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. So, oh man, it's been a while. I really want to talk to you about photography because it's something that we've talked about before, you know? Yeah. In the past, and we've gone into that. I've been on a shoot of yours, you know, uh, yeah. and I've gotten the taste of what it's like to work with the great Sam Lee, the photographer. So I appreciate. I appreciate. I'm excited. As you can see, I am not in my normal studio, but you know, we gotta live with the times, I guess. We gotta live with the pandemic, Zach. We gotta <laughs> live with the pandemic. So hashtag COVID life. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. We'll, we'll get through it. In fact, I heard some places are reopening, so or planning to reopen, so it's all good. And so, I haven't seen you in a while, so what have you been up to these days apart from, from now, like, you know, with so, your work? In the midst of pandemic, can't really photograph uh, a lot of people, mostly because if people are coming in and out of the city, just too much travel, too much of a risk. Uh, lately, I've actually been building a design portfolio. Oh. Design's fun. Sounds so, cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Really cool. It's good to get stuff together, you know, like all of your best work. Because I know you've got a lot of good work, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. For sure. And, so. Uh, go ahead. So, I, I know you from, from church and from elsewhere. So, could you introduce yourself a little bit about what you do you know who you are yeah my name is samuel lee i'm a multidisciplinary creative i picked up photography about two years ago and uh sometimes you fall in love with something you just keep shooting and uh i love film so for my work i do a multitude of different uh things photography gaffer on set a script writer, anything that people need me to be, I am. I am Sam. And so, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's all. I didn't know you were into a bit of screenwriting. Is that really true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. You think I'm a lie on your podcast? <laughs> well, okay. I, I know we're talking about, you know, photography but I, and, and filmmaking. But, it's uh, mostly ad script writing. Okay. Not the screenplays, not some, you know, epic 90 page film. It's right. like the, the three to five page uh, ads. Right. Okay. All right. I want to pick your brain a bit actually about that whole uh, agency client relationship with sure. like how that works with being a photographer. Cause I know that's what you've been doing. Yeah. So uh, but I'm already jumping the gun. So like, first of all, how did you get into photography? What made you want to get into that field in the first place? I don't remember exactly. I think a friend may have just said, like, uh, you want to go out and take some photos? And I don't know if you can tell I'm a fairly fashionable guy. Oh, yeah. Well, so I always sure. enjoyed being on the, uh, the front end of the camera, kind of posing, looking good, finding a cool spot. But I think my brain asked me one day, like, oh, what if you're behind the camera? What's that like? What is it like to direct people 
to come up with the outfit, to come up with the setting, to figure out what kind of uh, emotion you want to convey. And so I did it. I think we had fun. Uh, I picked up my dad's old camera. You know, one of those things you get at Costco. It's not great, <laughs> but you learn with the basics. Yeah. And then I just started photo. I just became known as a photographer amongst friends. Soon you get a client. Soon you get a job. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. Nice. Was this in college that you started this whole uh, endeavor? Or yeah, was yeah, this yeah. Before? All right. Uh, probably a senior year of college. So. Nice. What were you studying? Just out of curiosity, I always ask this question to guests uh, where they went to school and what they studied. I studied uh, communication. Okay. I like to talk. I like to communicate. So I think nice. it's a major for me. Well, that works out in a way. It's kind of aligned with what you've been working with and what your, your skills are, right? You know, yeah. photography is a communicative medium. It's, like yeah. an art, it's an art form, but it's also a communication form. So Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But you didn't really plan on going into photography with the major, right? Or did no. photography influence your decision to pursue communication? You know, thankfully, my parents just said, uh, at the end of the day, Sam, as much as we want you to make money, like we want you to be happy with whatever you do. And I mean, you know, I just yeah. like hanging out with friends, having a good time. So it's kind of random to be like, oh, I think it's a possible career. It's a possible high paying career mm -hmm. that brings you to cool places, lets you meet cool people. So I figured, uh, shoot, why not? Yeah. I got my first job out of college. I actually did not get hired for photography. I got hired at an ad agency uh, on the non-creative side. Oh, really? And yeah, I just, yeah, I just kept uh, doing my photos. And at some point they noticed, they said, hey, we'd like you to take photos for our agency. I said, sure. I mean, I'm already doing it. Might as well get paid. And then I became the uh, in-house photographer. Uh, I have photographed for Soup Plantation, mm -hmm. uh, Works, the San Diego Symphony. Sweet. And uh, my first celebrity was uh, Melvin Gordon. Nice. For the uh, LA Chargers. I think he changed teams now, but he was on the uh, LA Chargers. That's awesome. Wow. So when you, when you say non-creative, you mean like clerical work, you know? Uh, or, or, or the, uh, the account side. So most ad agencies have the account creative. So pretty much anything that's like project management, dealing with clients like on a daily basis, uh, you know, specs. Okay. That's the uh, account side. The creative side is like, what's the colors? What's the tagline? Right. Yeah. It, I think it's the more fun side. Oh yeah, to I totally agree with that. Not that I have too much experience in that, but I got a taste of what it's like last year at an internship at a news station. And they have their own divisions and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah. I definitely want to get in with the photographers there. That's kind of yeah. my goal, you know? So we'll see. But not about me. It's not about me right now. It's about you. So <laughs> where so so you've been working at this ad agency. Yeah. How did you get your job there in the first place? I first applied. I don't, it keeps the name of the system keeps being changed, but whatever UCSD's uh, job system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think now it was they, Port Triton, but it keeps getting changed. Right. Yeah. It was Port Triton, and now it's a handshake. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That's cool. So, he went just straight through the portal. That's pretty, pretty yeah. convenient. And, um, you know, something that not every student takes advantage of. So Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, the CEO of the company, he, he was a communication major and he was at UCSD. And so upon our first meeting, he just really liked me. And uh, it all worked out from there. Sweet. Sweet. Make a good impression on that first interview? Or? I think I made a decent impression, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Nice. So what do you do there or what did you do there as of late, you know, with the creative side? So you're a photographer, but do you do other things? Like yeah, 
I mean, so I recently got promoted to a social content specialist, which is really cool. And basically they let me do uh, whatever for, so for example, we try to hook in clients. Uh, I would basically be the one that makes an ad with whatever it is they either give me or I find or I make up. And then we sell it to them in essence saying, Hey, here's a free ad. You guys try it out. If it works well, we'll make more for you. So that basically includes photography, video, motion graphics, some copywriting. And basically I had to make whatever I, I could that I feel like the client could use. And yeah. Oh, wow. You got to be multi-skilled. What did you call yourself in the beginning? That was a really well-said title that you gave yourself. I'm just a multidisciplinary creative. There you go. A lot of, uh, That's good. A lot of things I know. That's good stuff. So you know all about the Adobe Suite. Probably you know yeah. all. You probably use that on a daily basis. I assume. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's important. Important. What kind of photography? Going back to that, are you drawn to? Are you more drawn? I know we talked about this before. You said you're really drawn to people. But yeah. what, what kind of photography are you into? Because you do like a lot for the ad agency, which I assume like is like a, a lot of product and service related yeah. photography. Yeah. But but. You know, what are you drawn to, most of all? I like people. I think as an Asian-American artist, I want to capture the Asian-American soul. So I actually photograph a lot of uh, Asian-American models. Uh, I like people. I think people are dynamic. I think portraits is my language, you know? It's about nuance. It's about the feeling. It's about the relationship between me and the model. It's not just like, hey, can you look, uh, can you look good or look more moody? You know, it's like together we kind of form the picture together. Mm. And I like that. Nice. So, but, uh, but at work, I've, I did everything, man. I did events. So if the mayor, if the San Diego mayor was hosting an event, with the San Diego Symphony, I'd be there for event photography. If we had a client, we have a, a soap client, they're like, hey man, can you get us some photos of a nice setup of our soap, like in a, uh, like a fake forest setting, I set that up. If someone needs a stop motion, we do that. If, uh, I mean, anything and everything, man. Right. Photographed. By the bar of soap, you mean Soapy Joe's, right? No, I mean uh, Dr. <laughs> Wait, what? Dr. Dr. Squatch. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah, I that we, wrong. We a, the thing my ad agency specializes in is uh, viral ads. So we made an ad for them. It had over 100 million views. So it did wow. very well. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's Soapy Joe's is a car wash. Um, right that's what i was yeah. thinking of okay <laughs> i got my facts mixed up <laughs> all right so outside of your job because i know that you've done photography outside uh for other people what do you usually like to do and what have you done like for example grad photos right yeah grad photos engagement photos uh honestly i, I like i said i love portraits and i I like, I like creating my own little world. So the bigger photo shoots with like backdrops and the uh, professional lighting, those are harder to set up. But I, spend, I make sure I spend a weekend or two dedicated to those every once in a while. Oh yeah. Yeah. This Mad Adapt show was a thing. We started yeah. that and that was pretty involved, right? We got like light, big old, I forget what they're called, lights. Three camera setup, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, so for those watching, I made my own YouTube show. It's called the Smat Adapt Show. And I just wanted a long form uh, YouTube show that talks about real life topics. One of the episodes is called Figure Out Your 20s. And I was a young 20 year old man. I said, shoot, I wanna talk to someone who I feel like is figuring out their 20s. 
And so I interviewed a friend and you can find it on YouTube. Smedadap. Yes. S-M-A-D-D-A-D-A-P. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> my, my man Zach here, he was a cameraman. Uh, he gave great ideas on what to do, what to do for camera uh, transitions, breaks, starting the show, ending the show. And uh, it's a good time. That was a fun, fun project for sure. Yeah. I know I've seen you approach a model one-on-one, -on -one, how mm -hmm. you interact, but could you go a little bit more in depth again on how you approach a model? For example, yeah. like a complete stranger. Yeah. Maybe. How would you, you know, chat them up and then go from there? So I don't work with complete strangers often. Mm -hmm. It's actually very rare. I, I like to stay within the network. So like a friend of a friend or a friend of a friend of a friend or whatever, you know, uh, when I do work with complete strangers, it's very simple. I introduce myself. I'm a photographer. My name is Sam. Here's some of my work. And just the way the world is, like sometimes people don't respond. It's part of life. You just move on. But the people that do respond and want to work together or have a vision or have an idea, uh, I usually create a mood board. I say, hey. This is the type of shot, the type of lighting, this is the setting, this is your outfit, try to figure it out. And I think the most important thing I've learned, like for sure, with talking to people, whether it's a friend of a friend or a complete stranger or a model I've worked with five times, is that like having those touch points when communicating is like the the surest way to build trust. So, you know, a week before the shoot, just like, hey, just to confirm, like, you good, you need a ride. Uh, we're still meeting at this time. You know, you give a weather update. Mm -hmm. Anything that it just shows I'm thinking about this all the way through from not even just meeting you, but from like, how are we getting there? How, where are we going? Where are we parking? What to bring? time of day right and i think as long as you communicate all that people are like especially people that are complete strangers will be like hey you know what like i don't know exactly how this is going to go but at least i know that the photographer or director or whoever is in charge of this is taking care of it to the best that he can right it's a sign of responsibility and trust right yep you yep. build with the model or the client or whoever. Yeah. Uh, and have you gotten referrals because of that? Like, because of how you treated other people? Yeah. Because uh, the thing is, the photography community, they, they speak about each other. So when people see cool photos, they usually ask, hey, how's your photographer? And it really only takes one person to be like, uh, this guy, like the photos may be great or the work may be great, but like, I don't know, he's weird or he's creepy or it was not well planned, even if the photos came out well. And you realize, uh, I'm sorry, there's a loud helicopter, but okay. you realize that at the end of the day, it's not just about end result product as much as people think it is. It's about the whole process, you know, because maybe I'll get great photos uh, with someone, but if I didn't do it well, the whole process, I may not work with that person again, or they may not want to work with me, you know? Yeah, so, true. To avoid a lot of stress, you just over plan. That's, that's really good. I mean, the problem is like some people don't want to go through that planning process, like or what's pre-production, right? I mean, would you even call that pre-production? I don't know. It's not a yep. film. Yep. It's a, it's like a relationship. In a sense. Yeah. I mean, I mean, photo, you know, photo shoots are generally smaller scale than film because they usually require just less people, you know, but at the end of the day, pre, pre-production is pre-production, man, you know, that's true. Whether, yeah. that's a, whether that's a weather check, whether that's getting a prop in time, that's all pre-pro. And if you don't do pre-pro well, you're not going to have a good shoot. Yeah, that's a fact. I know that from experience. What would you tell someone right now who's like wanting to start out as a photographer? 
Oh. Like in general, like how would you, with someone with very little experience, sure. what would you tell them to get started successfully? I think the biggest thing is know your camera because I guarantee you, like if you don't know your camera and you go and you just like click a button and like you're on a shoot and the people are like, hey, let's start shooting. And I don't know, you're just starting and you press something that doesn't seem normal. It's like you will, you will internally freak out and you will like maybe you're in the wrong setting and because you don't know how to fix it, you just shoot the whole thing wrong. It's like, <laughs> yo, spend an hour, look up some YouTube videos, know your camera, know how to switch, know what you want on, know what you want off, you know? Yeah. Uh, the sec uh, uh, there's three big things. One, know your camera. Two, understand lighting. Like at the end of the day, like the most important part of photography is the lighting. As much as, you know, your subject and composition, like that's what separates good from great lighting. And that's something that you'll figure out for a lifetime, but at least understand the basics of exposure and lighting. And third, like I said, you know, when you work with people, this isn't, Photography is inherently collaborative. Mm. So if you show up late, guess who doesn't want to work with you? Everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your, your battery not charged? Nobody wants to work with a photographer who shows up without, ba without charged batteries, you know? So it's like, at the very least, as long as you take care of your stuff, you will not fail, you know? You will do the bare minimum. So... Take care, of, take care of yourself. That's good. Man, that is some good stuff. Guys, pay attention to this. Take some notes if you haven't already. Go back and rewind this thing. <laughs> the wise words of my man Sam. Let's How go. do you – so go into a little bit more. I'm really, really interested in the relationship aspect sure. between the photographer and the client. You know, you, you outlined some good things about mm -hmm. some, some things to be aware of while on the set, but how do you really develop a good relationship with people? Uh, what's the social science behind that? Did you, were you always as confident as you were when uh, you know, thanks first started? Me, my parents raised me to be a confident man, so l luckily I'm blessed with, mm. some, uh, with some good instruction, some good learnings. Uh, I'd say it's a, it's a mentality thing, right, Zach? Yeah. At the end of the day, like, even if some people are harder to work with, like, if you on the other side of my camera, you're my friend, you know? So friends, they don't stab each other in the back. They don't, uh, they don't ever degrade each other. They always uplift each other, right? Yeah. So if I'm having a difficult time with a model, we can't find the right pose or she's not uh, she or he is not, you know, understanding what I, my vision is, our vision is right. They, you collaborate, you know, if I had a vision for like, Hey, try this pose. And at the end of the day, it's not working. I usually say, okay, we tried. It's not working. Do you have any ideas? And I let them, I let them express themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when they get stuck and say, Hey Sam, I'm kind of stuck. I ran out of poses. I say, Oh, I have a new idea, you know? And so in the simplest way that friends collaborate is, uh, it's like playing, you know, when you play together as children, right? Is, you know, there's usually a leader and a follower and you switch, you know? Sometimes right. someone's a team captain in one game and someone gets chosen in the other game. And so I apply that to a lot of stuff and uh, it works out pretty well for me. Nice. It's some good stuff. I mean, that's something you should probably develop early on, I assume. Cause like later it might get a little bit harder to develop yeah. those skills, I assume. So would you consider like college as your playground? Cause for me, like I was able to like, borrow equipment and stuff so that was yeah. never a problem i never had to spend a dime yeah but when it really came down to it it was just about developing those leadership skills uh and getting to like make some friends so did you like 
have any any tips for people who are in college who want to get started or like you know yeah the first time hey honestly if you in college whatever it is you love if you happen to love photography man like you know spend a couple hundred bucks buy that camera and like you know you, you go to class do your stuff but like you know there's meetups you can meet new people like i'd say in relation to playing right having a good time with whatever it is you film photography painting whatever the medium is like you need to just do it do it enough where that if a request comes through you can do it so for example i took enough photos where like i didn't do a lot of event photos like show up to a formal event suit and tie and take photos but because i had just practiced enough with light with angles and most importantly with people introducing myself i can't tell you how many times man i've seen awkward event photographers but i learned hey at the end of the day i'm not sh like what's on the other end of my camera is a real living person you can't just shove a camera in their face you know introduce yourself make yourself charming hey i'm sam event photographer y'all are you know y'all are some handsome people would love to photograph you boom that's the difference between that and someone that's like uh sh sh oh my god what are you doing to me right. oh I'm, you know i'm just the event photographer so like you know what i'm saying so yeah. the, the person part thankfully uh is easier for me if it's harder you just gotta practice man you gotta meet new people and say hey i'm a new photographer i have this idea for a shoot and whoever wants to try it you know and i guarantee the best part about college is that someone is willing to try it with you you know there's right. way more models than photographers as much as people think there's a lot of photographers, there's like way more models. People, people want their photos taken. People want Instagram photos. People want all that. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned that, you know, whole dynamic uh, during events. Cause like on campus, like part of my job is to do some photography, uh, usually like symposiums, conferences, and sometimes they go out and like have some snacks every once in a while. And there I am with my, a camera I'm like going around like trying to get the best shots and then people sometimes notice that while they're like especially while they're eating I think they might be a little bit like turned off by that yeah so like I could see like just gauging from their face like if they really don't want to be photographed so like yeah. Yeah, it's just about reading people huh it's like it's about, about reading people and reading the room hmm. interesting uh, wow yeah, Zach, just something that, uh, maybe a cultural insight. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm full Korean. And in Korean, we have this word called nunchi. Nunchi is basically social wisdom. And there's no, there's no, uh, there's no real like English translation, but more than reading a single person, the connotation with nunchi is that it's how to read the room. So anytime you enter a restaurant, you can, you have a sense of nunchi. If everyone is really quiet, it's like, Oh, did someone just share bad news? Not a good time to make a joke. You know, if everyone's having a really good time, okay, I got bad news. I'll wait till later to tell everyone, you know? So it's all about reading the room. And I think, uh, as a Korean person, I think obviously you can read the room, but, it's interesting how my culture has like uh, we have a thought process behind it and it influences our daily life. So that's interesting. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Next keep time. Mind. Read, read the room, you know, read the room and read people, read the room, read your camera, read a book, just read everything. Man. Read everything. It's <laughs> great. It's great. What do you shoot on? By the way, I, for, I always for, uh, not, I, not forget is I know you're a Nikon guy. But just for the sake of this podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as I explained earlier, my dad's, my dad had a Canon, one of the basic Canons that you get at Costco. It's like mm -hmm. the very most entry level camera. Uh, yeah. I have a Nikon D750. Mm -hmm. 
which is a it's a nice uh it's actually a nice gift family a friend of mine uh they just uh, they weren't using it and they said hey sam we know you're into photography and they gifted me this very nice camera and uh, it's been good for me ever since nice nice all right last uh question i have for you um because i know starting out you're not going to have people come to you is that right like you're going to have to go out take the initiative and ask people uh, for your service right so how did you do that to start i just kept photographing kept meeting new people uh, the biggest secret i think uh, to make a name in whatever industry is that you need people in that industry to give you credibility, you know? Mm. So I could be a fantastic photographer, but if no other photographer in the world ever like backed me up, my credibility is very minimal. Mm. So I think uh, in, if you think about networking, whether you're in film, whether uh, you're in photography, is that as much as you need the average person to enjoy your work, there's just certain people that have gone further than you that you need to be like, hey, what, what, would, what kind of project would I need to complete for you? When you talk about me in other rooms, for the conversation to be like, hey, Here's a really gifted photographer, videographer, painter. And when those people can give you the okay, then uh, that helps your credibility a lot. Now, we live in a world of Instagram, of social media. You can become famous. Uh, you can become an overnight sensation in some, in some aspects. Uh, if that's what you want, go for it. You know, I love photography. If only 50 people in the world enjoy my photography, then at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter because I love it. So 50, 500, 500,000, whatever it is, if I make art that I know is at the highest level that I can make, then I'm content with myself. All right. Nice. Nice. So you're saying with that too, and I know this is probably the wrong question to ask. But some people who are starting, starting out, some people might be thinking, can I make money with this? Yes. So can you, can you make money with your photography? Yeah. Hey, honestly, uh, people will pay. The simplest, I think the easiest part of photography to get into, uh, if, you, if literally all you have is a camera, is just family photos. You just go to a park. You find a nice spot, make sure the lighting's good. Uh, a family hits you up, says, hey, we want some family photos, whether it's Easter, Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, St. Patrick's Day, whatever it is. And you just say, hey, I'll meet you here. We shoot for an hour. Man, you can get 150 bucks, 200, like, you get really good. I got friends of friends, they charge 500 bucks for an hour and people pay because wow. If you make, if you take great photos, then you take great photos, you know, nobody, uh, people, people will trust you, mm. you know, if they see good quality work and, uh, that's easy to get into. So. Okay. And I assume again, you have to build up the credibility to get to that point where you can charge that much money. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see how it's all interconnected guys. If you haven't found out already, I've been getting the idea. All right. So <laughs> this is pretty, pretty amazing. I have to say you have uh, anything else you want to say about your work currently and what uh, future things you have going up in the yeah. pipeline of the Sam Lee workshop. Yeah. I mean, right now we're in pandemic, so I'm not taking a lot of photos uh, just because uh, right now you can't really go outside and meet people. All right. But Let's say I, like things resume really soon. What are your next steps? Oh, I'm gonna go for some really lofty uh, ideas. Uh, I want to do some underwater stuff, but Ooh. that may take a little while. Uh, that requires a lot of 
like just a lot of stuff, like not even on camera, just like building a, a water tank, the right lights. Um, but just art directing more uh, ambitious projects. And, you know, when you art direct something bigger, you can't do it as frequently. Yeah. So I got a couple of projects lined up. Nice. All right. That, that's all I had to ask. And where can people find some of your stuff on online? You can find my work at samuel-li.com. Thankfully, uh, nobody took that uh, domain. <laughs> so that's right, samuel-li.com. You can see my personal photos. You can see my professional work. You can see it together. So Nice, nice. And you're open for work, I assume. You can take anything. Well, of course, once this whole thing is... Gets, hey, if you uh, need photos, I'm your man. Yeah, assuming that people listen to this a few months from now, they can hit they you will, up, right? Jack, they will, baby. They will come. They will come. Hey, uh, if it's on film, it lives forever, baby. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And your Instagram? Sam freaking Lee, L-I. Sam freaking Lee. Sam All right. Me, baby. Sweet. All right. It was a nice, nice time talking to you, Mr. Always. Sam. It's been a while, but I'm glad we got to talk again. Love you, Doug. Thanks for hosting me. Uh, man, you're gifted. You're a gifted filmmaker. And I can't see what, uh, after this is all over, Zach, I can't see what, what kind of projects you're working on, who you're meeting. I'm very excited for your future, man. Thanks. You as well. All right. I really hope you enjoyed that episode of the Film Frat Podcast. Remember, you can follow Sam at Samuel-Lee at dot com. Samuel-Lee.com and his Instagram, Sam Freaking Lee. That's, that always got me. It's, it's good. He's got some great stuff, though. So if you want to see what he's actually done, I really suggest you go, you go check it out. Because he is one of a kind. I tell you, he's one of a kind photographer, a good friend, and a hardworking person. So he inspired me as a filmmaker and someone as a creative to just go out and do it you know it's not always easy to just uh, uh gain that confidence like like sam has so hopefully that inspired you as well remember you can follow more of the film frat podcast at filmfrat.com and remember if you haven't already hit follow on spotify or apple podcasts or wherever you find podcasts it means a lot to me and uh just you listening to me right now means a lot in these times especially and i know it's not easy for for you guys out there which is which is uh saddening for me because i know a lot of people are struggling out there right now as creatives uh in this world we live in it's, it's really unfortunate but but we're gonna get back up we're gonna we're gonna take on this world strong we're gonna get back into this business we're gonna keep doing what we love and we're gonna we're gonna get out of this we're gonna climb out of this situation it's temporary, and I believe that the best is yet to come for you as a creative and as a student. You might be thinking, how am I going to find a job in this environment? But you will, because the world is going to get back to normal. That's just what I believe in, and I believe the best for you as a creative, myself included. Um, so it's, it's not always easy, but just remember that this is temporary. So, anywho... If you're, if you're listening to this like months after, you don't have to worry about it. Because uh, I'm sure by then, you know, the world is turning back to normal by then. So, anywho, I hope this inspired you in your creative journey as a photographer, cinematographer, or whatever you want to be, even as a director. Because um, you kind of need to be a leader uh, to become a director. And photographers also have to become leaders. So, Sam is a one-of-a-kind leader, so... I really hope you got a lot out of this podcast. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to me. Go check his stuff out. It's amazing. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this episode. Remember that you are gifted, you are creative, and you are able. Talk to you later. That's all from this episode of the Film Fraternity Podcast. For more filmmaking tips and tricks you can use on your next project, visit www.filmfrat.com. That's F-I-L-M-F-R-A-T dot com. <laughs>